Jeff. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, hi. Great yeah. to be here. Yeah, so I think you have a pretty unique story. And so to start off with, you know, you've transitioned into visual artistry. So how does, I'm curious to know, how does a background in graphic design and landscape architecture lead to starting your own business uh, in woodworking and, and visual artistry? Yeah, of course. Um, so it's, it's an interesting journey uh, in a sense that kind of had a, you know, a lot of checkpoints along the way and pivots, like I would imagine most uh, career paths for some people out there. Um, I never was the one who kind of figured it out right away what I wanted to do, but, um, you know, it started undergraduate, studied graphic design, always had a affinity for the arts. Um, and so by doing that and had this desire and uh, liking of designing for people and, you know, helping their brand grow with logo design and graphic design uh, needs and marketing kind of aspects. But, um, you know, I realized pretty quickly after uh, uh, graduating undergraduate, um, I had worked for an advertising company that was, you know, pretty simple, uh, basic ad design where, you know, my creativity was very limited as to what I could do is, um, very minimal and I just felt like I wasn't really reach my potential. Um, and then add in the fact that I started to realize, man, I'm, I'm sitting behind a computer screen eight hours a day, um, you know, seven days a week. And I really had more of an itch to kind of work with my hands, be outside, um, be a little bit more active in my uh, career path. And I just thought to myself, this is going to be what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I'm, I don't think I'd be too happy. So, um, <clears throat> did that for a few years um, in Indiana, where I grew up. And then once I realized that I needed to kind of change a career path, um, I started looking at what else I was really interested in as well, which was uh, architecture. Um, and I did a quick uh, tour of a architecture school in Indiana. And on that tour, I learned about uh, their landscape uh, architecture department which um, at that time I had no idea even was a field of study that you could, uh, you know, go into. Right. And I thought to myself, I was like, wow, that's really cool. Something where, you know, you're dealing with natural elements, but also this high level of design concepts and creating uh, unique spaces for people to kind of inhabit, which really is something I still do enjoy um, studying and, you know, looking into uh, even today. Um, so at that point, I decided landscape architecture was, uh, would be a great career change, uh, something I'd love to pursue. Um, so at that point, I, I decided to uh, look into where would I want to go, and I, I ended up here in uh, Denver, Colorado, and I studied uh, at University of Colorado, Denver. I uh, got my master's there, and right away, I was hired, um, worked with a, a former professor uh, who was starting his own firm and uh, worked for him for about five years uh, out of Fort Collins, as well as Denver helping open up that office. And uh, our, our primary focus in that industry, or our niche was more like the Botanic Garden World, uh -huh. uh, campus design, so, so big projects, uh, which were a lot of fun to work with, you know, especially the Botanical Garden projects. So you're really working with nature and really uh, utilizing the different um, plant species out there and really working with that staff at Botanical Gardens really opens your eyes to different types of plants and materials out there. Uh, so it's a great experience. Um, and then it's, yeah, March 2020 came, uh, the coronavirus came in and it just kind of, I was a, amongst the millions that got affected by, uh, you know, being laid off. And, uh, you know, it was a big, it was a big, uh, it was a big bummer at the moment. Um, so I really enjoyed uh, my the job I was working at, but you know, at the same time, I was always kind of thinking about this um, this idea of woodworking because two years prior to 2020, uh, I'd gotten married, and for my groomsmen, I'd made um, what's called joiner's mallets. If you think about it, it's just like a wood hammer yeah. in a sense, and they kind of look like a, a Thor hammer in a sense. They're kind of bigger and bulkier, and um, so. Thought that'd be a great idea, something really unique and handcrafted uh, for these uh, these uh, great guys that are in my life. 
And uh, so I worked with a friend who's a, he's a woodworker himself and he kind of showed me the ropes and sorry about that. Um, kind of helped guide me along the process and it was through that process of uh, working with the wood and kind of the refinement that it takes to do kind of like a, a well-crafted uh, woodworking piece that really kind of opened my eyes and I just fell in love with the process right away. Um, I was, you know, my attention to detail, my um, love for kind of natural elements and passion for design kind of all I realized is encompassed in woodworking um, altogether. So I knew I really wanted to try something out with woodworking, maybe as a hobby or something once I had the space. Um, because currently I live in a, a condo complex. And uh, so once the, you know, I was laid off uh, from work, um, you know, I initially was looking at where can I look next for a, what's my next landscape architecture job going to be. Um, you know, not too many people were hiring at that time, uh, just because, you know, budgets and the economy was going down. So, um, you know, landscape usually is at kind of the bottom of the list of things that need to happen first, you know, the building's got to be built first and then then you can get the, the landscape in. So there weren't too many job opportunities out there, but in that same time, you know, it was kind of my wife who also encouraged me, you know, 100% right away was, hey, why don't you try out this woodworking idea that you've been tossing around? You know, I was pretty hesitant at first because I've always worked in kind of like a, uh, I guess a corporate setting where I go to an office and that, you know, I, I know what my job is and I know what I'm gonna get paid, you know, every two weeks or so. Um, so it was, it was pretty scary uh, to think about it that way, but, you know, I gave it a shot, um, jumped into a, a community workshop that was here in uh, Arvada, um, and they offered a monthly membership to work in a 24-7 a, a kind of wood shop. And so I, I did that for a couple months, and I uh, tested out some ideas that I have, and uh, behind me is the two first pieces that I kind of gave it a shot at, you know, I wanted to do, I like the idea of doing something large scale and big. And uh, so I just gave it a shot and posted pictures of it on, you know, Facebook and, uh, and Instagram. Um, and right away I had like a positive response from friends and families just saying like, wow, super cool. Like really enjoyed the design idea. Um, and so made a couple other pieces while in that wood shop and started to really think, okay, this is like, could be something, maybe I really can do this and make it happen. Um, and uh, let's see, like at that time, it was actually kind of funny and kind of a, a, a downer, but you know, I feel like trying to do your own business, it's always a constant, what I'm learning, it's a constant roller coaster of yeah. emotions. Um, so right when I was kind of in that, riding that high of, I'm, I'm gonna go for this and this is gonna, this, let, let's give it a shot. Then I think two days later, the, uh, the wood shop I was operating out of closed down due to the coronavirus. So kind of hit this like, well, you know, shoot, like what, what do I do now? Um, but, you know, luckily uh, my wife, she's from Colorado and her family lives uh, here in Wheat Ridge and uh, they were nice enough. We offered, hey, let's, can we clean out, you know, clean up half of your garage space and reorganize some things to give me a, like a little sliver of space to uh, get some tools in there, get a workbench and get going and continue this, this passion that I have for, for woodworking um, and, and, and art. And uh, they're nice enough to allow me to do that. So we made that happen. So I've got, you know, I guess what you call a, a, a big little wood shop going on in there. So Jeff, if somebody hasn't seen your website and your portfolio or they don't follow you on Instagram or social media, how would you describe your art to, generally speaking, to, to somebody that's never seen it? Uh, yeah, so I guess I would describe it as, um, I guess like the blanket statement might be uh, as luxury home goods or home decor um, for your kind of interior spaces. Um, it's, you know, my, my work is influenced primarily by uh, the natural elements in the world. Um, I've, always, <clears throat> I've always been fascinated with uh, kind of those the complex patterns that exist 
you know, at a microscopic scale and at a big scale of how nature just naturally is all interconnected and it creates these unique patterns, whether it's through like the physical design of things or just how uh, different ecosystems work together. Um, much of that I learned through my uh, grad school experience in landscape architecture and the different projects that I had worked on. Um, but it's always fascinating, like you, you zoom, zoom into a scale of say like the, the dragonfly's wing, which has this very kind of unique pattern that's designed specifically for that wing to create this really lightweight, um, you know, structure for them to fly around and carry their body weight, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've always find that really fascinating. Those kind of patterns and kind of um, kind of just influence the kind of patterns or geometric shapes I might derive from that kind of uh, information to create something uh, that in turn becomes art. And you know, I feel like it's only uh, uh, proper to use natural elements like wood, um, just because you know my experience working with it, I really enjoyed it. Um, part of working with wood that also fascinates me is you know every cut from every tree, even the same species, it's every, every unique, uh, every piece is gonna be unique to itself because the grain's gonna be a little bit different, uh, the texture is gonna be a little bit different, you know, depending on how, what stage that tree is at, you know, if it's fresh or rotting, you know, certain type of trees will get different coloration. Um, and all that lends to it being each piece that I make very unique and in a sense highly collectible artwork. Um, and that's what I hope to produce is, you know, each piece is one of a kind. I'm not making, you know, one piece 50 times um, or 100 times. Um, you know, here and there, I, I recently I made one design of this kind of mountain scene uh, for sale. I made four of them as like kind of a limited release. But, you know, it's the same design in a sense, but each piece is quite different because, you know, I use different woods. So the look of each piece is a little bit different. And like I mentioned, the grains is different of each wood. So um, in a sense, they are unique to themselves uh, in particular. Yeah, and I, I want to highlight that for a second because it really, you know, it's a good segue into how you operate with a client. You are not selling them a pre-made piece yeah. of art. The unique aspect extends itself into the client you're working with in that you'll go to their house and get a sense of the focal points and where uh, your art might be needed. And then you go back and design the art, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's, in my mind, I think that is something that's unique about my process. And that kind of derives from my past, uh, you know, uh, career experiences working as a landscape architect and graphic designer where, you know, the, the design process for the client's needs begins as a meeting discussing like what it is they're interested in, what what is the uh, uh, means to a solution that they need. And um, so I've always found that process pretty interesting and very uh, personable as well to where day one, it's like, hey, all right, here's an idea. Here's a wall space you're looking to fill. You know, I would approach it differently if it's a wall space in a master bedroom uh, per se than a wall space in an entry to your home. Um, or in your bathroom, in a sense. Um, the scale and the size of the art piece will change, you know, how intricate or how kind of out there and crazy it might be or abstract, you know, that's going to be part, uh, I'll have some input on that. Also, the client, you know, might have some thoughts on what they like. And so that way I can gather all of that information and then come back to the client with another meeting and say, hey, here's three kind of sketch ideas um, that I've developed that I think would work pretty well. And then, you know, the client gets to have input and be involved in the process. Um, and then next step, I refine kind of a final idea and get a confirmation from the client uh, before I go into actually producing it uh, in the wood shop. And, you know, that allows me to kind of know each step of the way, like, okay, like we were, you know, we're checking this point off. The client feels comfortable that the artwork they're going to get um, is in line with what, you know, has been discussed and, you know, I still kind of leave the door open for artistic kind of liberties and uh, creative uh, juices to flow if something pops in my mind while I'm actually assembling something and find like a unique uh, texture to the wood or in a couple past projects I found like, you know, you cut, 
you cut through a slice of wood and all of a sudden you find a, a nice uh, knot that has like a hole to it. And I've, uh, you know, been able to put that into an art piece and I've painted behind it like a bright gold or something to kind of give a small sure. little detail to pop. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's always, so that kind of process I think works pretty well and it's different than say making, you know, a bunch of art pieces and stockpiling them and then saying, hey, like, like, you know, I hope you buy this because <laughs> you like it. Um, and, but then as a buyer, you have to, you, you, you buy something like say these two big pieces behind me, something to that scale, it's kind of like, well, well then where do I put it in my house? And maybe, maybe at first you thought I know it could fit in this room, but then you hang it and you might be like, ah, I wish it was like a little bit wider and not as tall. And that's where this, the beginning process, starting the design with the client, I can take measurements and have an understanding of the space of the wall you're looking to fill, um, what other aspects of your home kind of affect the kind of, I guess, feng shui or uh, flow of the house and the focal point where that art piece might be best suited. Yeah. So it sounds very collaborative with the, yes. you know, seeing the space first and, and then trying to bring back a few options to the client uh, to choose from. Uh, you know, once they select one is, are they getting that sketch that you've done or is there still kind of some creativity, you know, because you then, you know, I'm sure uh, each, as you mentioned before, each piece of wood is unique and stuff. So, so, you know, how, how much, I guess what I'm asking is how much of the uh, finished product is the sketch and how much, when you mentioned create, uh, creative liberties, uh, how much does that play a part in it? Um, I'd say if, uh, I kind of, that's a good question. Um, Cause I never, I don't want to say, hey, here's an idea that I have for you and then show up at the end, like, well, this is a lot different. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if there's some sort of, you know, in that process, I'll also, I'll meet with the client and share like what different types of exotic woods I'd like to work with. Um, because as mentioned, like, you know, there's, there's purples and there's reddish tones. And so it, you know, they're, they're, those colors are going to affect how the artwork is uh, ultimately composed and feels in a certain space. Um, like if someone had purple walls, I probably wouldn't do purple heart wood uh, yeah. all over. So, um, so I'll meet with the client, you know, I usually let them know, like, here are the, almost like how an uh, interior designer or a designer in general, you know, is going to say, here, here's the palette of materials that I'm looking to work with and take that as samples to the client and have a conclusion there, you know, and then if something comes up where I'm like, ah, oh, I really like using this wood or completely kind of changing some of that, you know, I, I would run that type of stuff by the client. Um, smaller things um, that I think are going to make the art piece better or that, you know, I feel as an artist, you know, work for what the story of that art piece might be. Um, I might not necessarily feel I need to completely run that by the client. Um, and so far, I mean, everyone's been really happy with any of those kind of unexpected kind of unique uh, additions to the art piece. Yeah. So you brought up interior design. Uh, this, uh, you know, although you have, you know, you're the artist in this, this is somewhat of a, a family affair, correct? Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so my wife, she's also, she is an interior designer. Uh, she works, her and her dad have their own uh, uh, design build in a sense where her dad's kind of the GC and he's been doing that for, you know, 30 plus years. And uh, my wife's been working with him, uh, you know, past six years or so as kind of the the design lead on things. So uh, having her in the household, uh, just even just think about, you know, looking at a wall space, you know, that I'm working with a client and think, hey, you know, like, this is what I'm thinking. I can, I can also bounce creative ideas off of her and she can say, well, you know, this is what's either, you know, you know, what's trending right now, or, you know, what's more timeless uh, appeal and such like that. Um, so she'll be able to kind of give that input. So in a sense, the client's getting kind of two creative minds as like kind of a package deal at times. Awesome. And what part does Duchess play in this? Yeah, so like Duchess, that? she is the Dane of Dane Goodwood, which uh, I got to admit the name at first. Uh, it was like the first name I thought of for the business. And it, it um, 
was more of just kind of like, oh, well, that, that'd be kind of fun to play with. Um, but then, you know, as a play on words of, you know, dang it, good wood or something. Um, yeah. And at, the more I thought about it and the more I could not think of a better or something that I liked better as a business name, um, because it, it was unique that I'm, I, I'm doing woodworking, but it's also an art. Mm -hmm. the, the end product is art. So it's not like I wanted to call it like, you know, Jeff's wood shop or something like that, because then that wouldn't really pertain to the art world too much. Um, but I realized Dane Good Wood, I could, you know, it has a fun, rolls off the tongue. It's easy to remember. Um, then I could also use, you know, from, I was thinking about marketing, like, hey, I, I can use, you know, Duchess can be posed in the, the photos of some of my artwork for staging. And I mean, we're in Colorado where I think there are more dogs than there are people out yeah. here. So people everyone, loves, dogs. Yeah. everyone loves a good dog. Um, we all think we have the best one and none of us are wrong. Yeah. Um, and then also, yeah, I was able, you know, I can market and at, at the same time, I've been learning about Instagram, you know, social media, the business of social media, which I had not partaked in at all before starting this, this past July. And so I was like, well, you know, might as well have as many outlets as I can to, uh, uh, appropriately market my, my artwork. So, you know, to artists, to woodworkers, you know, if, if Duchess is part of the brand, then I can market it to dog lovers and animal lovers as well. So that's well, where it, she comes in. Yeah, not to get off topic, but it, it is always uh, fascinating to me where, especially social media, you know, my yeah. life work, real estate or yours, you know, with artistic background, you know, you might post a great uh, piece that you uh, you're proud of and, and you know you just finished and I could post some great content uh, on market conditions and and you know good response and then you throw a dog in there and you yeah. all the views and the engagement yeah no exactly and that happened to me not too long ago where I just randomly put a, a video of a short little video of a duchess trembling and scared about chasing a squirrel and then she didn't even chase it and it within a day and I never had anything over like 500 views at all. And it within a day is like up to a thousand. I'm like, well, what is this one video doing so much better than all of my artwork is doing? Uh, it is, it is fascinating um, to that extent. And one other point that Duchess, her role uh, in, in my artwork, but I'd like to, I'd like to uh, pursue is this idea. And I've only, I've done one piece. It's, it's, it'll be up on my website soon, the images of it, but, where Duchess, she always is dragging big sticks out of the creek. And I thought to myself, well, how fun and interesting could this be to take the sticks that Duchess drags out of the creek and put those into the, make an art piece around those. Yeah. Um, and also it, it kind of has this, to me, all this unique idea of this juxtaposition of just placing this natural looking stick and, uh, in the middle or as a focal point of more man-made, um, very clean cut like geometries, like the piece behind me, if you could almost imagine a, a branch cutting right through that, it creates this cool kind of interesting conversation in my mind, you know, what's, what's natural, what's man-made and that kind of, you know, there's bigger issues on that to talk about in climate <laughs> as well, but on a small scale as an artistic piece, I'd like to pursue that down the road. Yeah, look forward to, to seeing that. So on more of a, you know, fun and, and whimsical side, I always like asking people, you know, what is, you know, the one thing that, that people don't consider when it comes, you know, to, to your line of work, or they're always surprised to hear about, you know, something that you would never think of uh, with visual arts. And, you know, is there anything that, that yeah. comes to mind with that? Uh, yeah, and I think it's, you know, it's more, it's in the process of how I have to produce these artwork uh, pieces. And it's actually something that I didn't even know about uh, before I got into this. And that was, you know, I started this in July. And here we are in the uh, end of January. And, you know, I'm operating, like I said, out of my, uh, my in-laws garage currently, which is uh, uninsulated. And so the wintertime is pretty, pretty cool in there. And I've got a space heater. But what I didn't really fully understand was how the process of working with wood and glue for, you know, for glue ups and other uh, aspects, um, 
the glue has like certain temperatures that it needs to be operated at to for it to cure properly. Even the temperature of the wood has to be at a certain temperature. And those things kind of have to, you know, be within that range um, for it to, you know, adhere properly and hold strong. And, you know, I didn't realize that at first. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of like, oh, duh. But, you know, the actual specifics of the wood needs to be um, a certain temperature as well. You know, that kind of threw me for a loop. And so given it being uh, Colorado weather, it's it's been pretty uh, interesting trying to figure out my day-to-day -day schedule because, you know, Colorado, you can be, well, even like today, it's like nine degrees this morning and it's supposed to get up to like 40s of yeah. some, some sort. So it'll be kind of comfortable later. Um, so trying to figure out, you know, that, that good sweet spot window of when I can go into the wood shop and actually do some gluing. Uh, it's been, you know, maybe from 11 to three o'clock on some days. And then on the colder days, it's like, well, I guess I'll, uh, I'll just stay in and do more of the behind the scenes business aspects. So that, that aspect of, uh, is, was quite unique and, uh, kind of something I didn't, never really thought of. And I think most people don't know about that either. And then also, one other quick is just all, like, like I mentioned, I think before, but all of the different uh, colored hardwoods out there. Um, even, you know, a lot of times if you look up uh, like wood uh, guitars or people who make uh, really custom guitars, a lot of those guitars are made out of some really crazy, beautiful, exotic woods. And, you know, that, that color you see in those are not, uh, it's not stained typically or painted. It's all natural. So I'd say if you ever, people ever have a chance, you can go to like Austin Hardwoods is where I get my wood from. And they have a whole section of uh, woods of the world. And it's, I mean, it's, I took my wife in there one time with me and she just walking around. You can tell people are like, holy cow, I did not know this is, this is wood, <laughs> what I'm looking at. So one final question, Jeff, and, and again, I appreciate your time. You know, I, I think we've seen how this is all blended together with, with your background of, of design and, and, you know, an enjoyment of arts and, and how that led to more of being outdoors and bringing nature into uh, mm -hmm. uh, your love of arts with landscape architecture and, and how it all kind of came together with what a lot of people had to do, which was pivoting after COVID. So, yeah. you know, being almost a year in, if somebody's watching this interview and they like what they're, they're hearing, uh, you know, what's that one thing you like them to walk away from knowing about you and your passion and your art? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess I'd like to say, um, you know, well, first of all, you know, I'm like you're saying, I'm barely a year into this. And so I'm learning much of my process and much of what I'm doing as I go. Um, but I also think with my background and my kind of uh, unique timeline and such. And I feel like what I'm doing is very unique and it's, um, it's, it's very one of a kind type of artwork. And I'm putting kind of like everything I got into it right now. Yeah. Um, I want everything I make to be very high craft, well-made um, and a unique piece of work that, I mean, gosh, it'd be great if someday down the road they, they are you know highly collectible, like I can leave a legacy behind, but um, at the moment, it's more of I just, I love paying uh, close attention to detail and making very well-crafted uh, pieces of work um, that I hope people will appreciate. Yeah, and and just taking a look at uh, online at, at your stuff, I, I definitely think uh, it is unique and, and it is, you know, one of a kind. So yeah. if, if, if people are interested uh, in either talking with you or taking a look at your work, uh, you know, why don't you plug where uh, they can find you? Yeah, so uh, Dane Goodwood is the business name, and I was also lucky enough, no one else has that name out there. So I'm pretty easy to find if you just search that. Um, so Instagram, it's at Dane Goodwood. My website is www.danegoodwood.com. Um, and through my website, you can email me. Um, I will say, I'm also on Facebook as well. Um, but Instagram is probably like my primary feed where if you want to see what I'm doing, also see some uh, posts and stories about Duchess, you know, some of the fun, more fun, goofy side. Um, 
And then my website is more of like where I host kind of all the final products um, and all the, you know, all the pretty pictures and such. And yeah, either contacting through Instagram or Facebook works, or I'm sorry, uh, the website works just fine as far as uh, initiating a conversation about a design piece uh, for them. Yeah. Yeah, folks, it's, he's a good follow on Instagram. And, and like I said, there's, uh, it's, it's artwork that I had never seen. So uh, make sure to give uh, Jeff a follow. Uh, speaking of Duchess, you know, uh, you know, is she around? Can, can we introduce yeah, her? Let me, see if, let me see if I can grab her. I heard her knocking at the door while we were talking. I also think I heard my wife might have taken her outside to sort of go to the bathroom. So one second, I'll check okay. real quick. Well, unfortunately, she, she is outside currently, but, you know, there's a lot of photos on, uh, on Instagram under my stories and such, so you can get uh, a, a good uh, understanding of how goofy Duchess is and how much she loves running around and chasing sticks. <laughs> yeah, even more of, of a reason to give Jeff a follow on Instagram, because you can see all the... Uh, all the photos and videos of, of Duchess. So, well, like I said, Jeff, um, I I found the the artwork uh, fascinating and, and unique, and and I've uh, appreciate you giving the time to kind of tell us, you know, how it came about. And and uh, to yeah. everybody out there, like I said, um, reach out to to Jeff at his website um, or give him a follow on on Instagram. So, uh, thanks again for your time, Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I really appreciate this opportunity to kind of just chat about. Uh, my my process and accept oh actually here comes duchess now oh please there we go oh. there she is hey come over here yeah. come say hi hey duchess yeah <laughs> she's looking at her couch where she likes to sleep behind me and i've got some artwork stashed on there and she's kind of like why can't i sit there yeah and i i don't think folks know at home that you know we we heard before we started recording that you know, she was tired out at the dog park. So, so yeah, <laughs> she's, she's just looking for spots to sleep right now. Yeah. So, well, well, again, but yeah, and I really appreciate it, Dan. It's been a great uh, conversation with you. Okay. Well, again, thanks so much, Jeff. And, and, uh, you know, once we get through this uh, COVID times, you know, maybe we can uh, do another one where we're uh, out at your workshop and, and kind of see a little more uh, in, de in detail, you know, the artwork and, and how you put it together. I think that'd be a great conversation. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. Yeah. Thank you.